Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm back with another beginner knitting tutorial here. We're picking up on the swatch that we worked on last time when I taught you how to do the knit stitch. If you want to watch that video, the link is in the description box. But now we're going to jump into learning how to do the purl stitch. So instead of inserting your needle front to back like you do for the knit stitch, this time we're going to come in back to front just through this front loop of the stitch. Okay, you're still creating that X with your needles. You can, you know, hold it with one hand so you can pick up your yarn here when you're first getting started, just so you understand the mechanics of the stitch. Then we're going to wrap the yarn around the needle that is in front, closest to you. And then we swipe so we get this loop on the right hand needle. That's how you work the stitch. And then we need to slide it off of the left needle. So that's how you do the first one. All right, and I went kind of fast on that one. It's a little tricky sometimes to show the true movement on the first stitch because things can be a little bit loose sometimes, but let's do it again on the second one. Insert the needle back to front, only through the front leg of that stitch. Create the X with your needles. Take the yarn and wrap it back to front, okay? So we're going counterclockwise with this yarn. Counterclockwise around that front needle, and then you're gonna slide the needle now you have your second stitch on here and then you need to pull it off of the left hand needle, okay? So again, in slow motion. All right, so go ahead and try that. And now this method that I'm showing you is the American or English style or throwing oftentimes you hear it called. Now, one thing I want you to note is that when we purl, the yarn is in front. When we were knitting, the yarn was behind, okay? So you have to be mindful of what stitches you're supposed to be working in order to position the yarn in the correct spot. So we're doing just straight purling across, but if you were to do like a rib knit, which would call for two knits, like two knit stitches and then two purls and two knits and two purls, because you're alternating between the stitches, you would also have to alternate where the beginning position of the yarn is before you continue with that stitch, okay? So I'm still purling. I'm gonna go ahead and purl this row across. All right, so let's have a look at the row that we just did. We worked it across this way and we purled every stitch. So remember the purl is the one side, right? Or the, like the wrong side of the stitch. And if you have a row of purls on the opposite side, you will see knit stitches. So when we flip this over and I kind of tug on this a little, I can see that I have a row of knit stitches on this side. Okay, so let's call this the right side of our work. Now, if I wanted to continue this fabric where I see only knit stitches on one side and only purl stitches on another side, that would mean that we want to stitch out a stockinette stitch. Remember these samples from the previous lessons? So this is a sample that rolls on you naturally. That's just the nature of stockinette. And stockinette means on the right side of the work, which in our case is this, you did knit stitches all the way across. But then when you came back and started to work the other side, you worked purl stitches. So if you knit all on one side and purl all on the other, this is what you get, stockinette. So you can see the little bumps from the purl stitches and these are our knit stitches. So if we wanted to create this effect on this swatch, now that I have built up knit here, all I need to do is knit the next row. Okay, if you wanna continue doing or seeing the same stitches that you see right there, just look at the stitch and repeat what it is. So this is a knit stitch. If I wanna do another row of knit here, I'm just gonna copy that and knit that same stitch. I'm gonna knit across so I can show you how it starts to build that stockinette fabric. All right, so I knit this row across and you can see how that fabric is starting to build up with even more knit stitches. And so now if you wanted to continue in stockinette stitch, you're done here, so turn the needle, 
you have your other loose needle and you're ready to work your way this way. So remember to continue, you wanna repeat what you see right there. So have a look at your first stitch and I can see that it has that little scarf, we call it, around the stitch and that tells me that that is a purl stitch. So I'm going to purl that stitch and the next one is a purl, so I'm gonna do the same to that, to that, to that and that's gonna continue me in the stockinette pattern. So purl, remember we insert from back to front, the yarn is in front We're gonna wrap and work this across. Now I'm gonna do a few like this and then I wanna show you what would happen if you come across a pattern and it tells you to purl, say purl five and, and knit two, how you would switch the yarn in order to position everything correctly. So give me a second and let me do a few more purl stitches so I can work my way to the middle of this one. All right, so I've purled six stitches. Now let's say I'm reading a pattern and for this row it tells me purl six and knit two and then purl the rest or something. Let's just pretend. So I've purled six and now I need to knit two. So remember we ended off on purl stitches so my yarn is in the front of my work, okay? I can't just leave the yarn in front and knit because look what's gonna happen. The yarn is coming from the front of the work, then it needs to go over the needle, back around, and then when I work that stitch, look what happens. I've worked the stitch all right, but I also have what we call a yarn over. I've added an additional stitch to this right hand needle. So that's where a lot of people, especially beginners make mistakes, where you forget to move the yarn to the back because it needs to be in the back of the work in order to do a knit stitch. Okay, so if you've ever come across that problem, that's probably what happened. You had the yarn in front because you ended off at a purl and then it said to knit and you just kept the yarn in the front and went for the knit stitch. Okay, so let's take this back and correct our mistake here. All right, so we've ended off the purl stitch and the yarn is in front. If I look at my instructions and it tells me I need to knit the next two stitches, I already know, hey, stop and position the yarn behind my work because it has to be there in order to do a knit stitch. So once it's behind, then I can knit regularly one, and two stitches and you can see that I have not added any additional yarn overs there. I've only worked the same number of stitches that I've had, okay? So now say you finish off with a knit stitch and the pattern tells you to purl. Same thing. You can't just come here and wrap around and do this because now the yarn is in front and you've done something funky here, okay? You see how that doesn't look like a proper stitch? So again, you have to make sure that that yarn is in the correct place, whether front or back, based on what stitch you're going to be working, okay? So let me fix this. So if you just knit a stitch and the yarn is behind and you see that the directions say, purl your remaining stitches, stop when you see purl and say, okay, the yarn has to be in the front of the work for purling. Once it's in front, then begin your purl stitches. And that way you see that you don't have anything extra, nothing funky, the stitches look great, and you can continue. All right, and that is how you do the purl stitch. So now you know how to knit and how to purl. I highly recommend that you practice these stitches just on a little swatch like this, just to get the mechanics and the movement down. And then meet me back here. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next videos. Because next, we are gonna take it a step further, not just knitting and purling, which you already know how to do from watching my videos, but I'm gonna bump it up to making an actual beginner-friendly project. Here's a little dishcloth or washcloth that I designed specifically for beginners, where we work knit stitches, purl stitches, and then I'm also going to teach you how to increase and decrease. We'll be using really basic increases and decreases because this project is actually worked like this. Instead of working it across like a square, how you probably think you would, look at the really cool pattern and design that we have on it. It actually starts off small in one corner, we work this way, this way, this way until we reach this center point. And if it looks big enough and it's exactly the height of the four sides that you wanna have on your finished dishcloth, then we start to decrease. So then from here up, the rows get shorter and shorter and shorter until we finish off on this end, okay? It's a lot of fun to make. I hope that you will tune in. And like I said, make sure that you click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.